everyone, welcome to Rondell Designs. Today, I'm going to show you how to make five physical products from your original artwork. And the reason I wanna share this with you is if you are trying to build a business based on your art practice, it's not always um, possible to sell your original artwork as much as you'd like. And by using your art, and taking that image and turning it into a, something that's functional, that someone who might not have enough money to purchase a piece of original art can then buy and own a piece of your art still. And they make great, these products I'm gonna show you today make great gifts. I've been doing this for the past five years and the products that I am gonna show you today, especially the last couple, are my main income source. So with my business, I will probably sell between twenty and thirty thousand dollars worth of product a year. Not all profit. I wish it was, but um, and the last couple of products are, are my main income source. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing that you can turn your original artwork into is probably the obvious one: art prints. So I sell art prints of my original art, both digitally on Etsy, so I do printables, but and I don't do that with all my art, just specific ones, but I, I also sell physical art prints. So you can sell your art prints in two ways. You can just do mass produce, sort of print on demand with your printer, good quality paper, obviously, or you can do limited edition prints, signed and numbered, so you only do a set number of prints for each particular artwork. I know people who that is their chunk of their business income is doing limited edition prints. They still sell them for, you know, anywhere from, for this size, which is A4, anywhere from sort of $30 to $80 to $100 for a limited edition print. Most of the people that I know in the more handmade world rather than the art world who would normally do markets and online stores and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a great way. Obviously you'd wanna get those prints professionally printed so you have a higher initial outlay and you wanna find a fine art printer to do those limited edition prints or purchase a really good quality printer yourself. My prints, I tend to just sell them for sort of between 15 and $20. Um, these are a big income earner for me However, now that I'm focusing more on my printables, which I'm doing on my website, rondeldesigns.com, and my Rondell Printables Etsy shop, that's a great way to do it if you don't mind having a lot of people being able to download your artwork. And there is a trust issue there, obviously, that you know you hope that they don't go and copyright your artwork. Um, but that's why I don't put all of my most favorite, amazing originals into the printables option because I just, yeah, I wanna keep those ones special. Um, so that is number one. Now, I my artwork is generally either a digital, so this B I created a few years ago, and I also do a painting. So I've got, this is one of my originals, which is oil painting. But most of my art originals is generally mixed media. So this is a mix of like acrylic, buttons, paper, a bit of everything. And do you know what? I find that both the digital images that I create and the physical art, I find that the imagery that I then use transferring onto physical products sell equally as well. It's just what people are attracted to. Okay guys, and number two, out of our five things that you can turn your artwork into a physical product is greeting cards. Now I've got some examples. So again, I showed you this original. This is called Garden of Greens. I have turned this into a greeting card. And let me just tell you, you don't have to have fancy cameras to photograph your artwork. You don't have to take them to fancy fine art printers to have them take the, the photo for, for you, which, although that is an option, if you're thinking of reproducing an image a lot of times and you're really not confident with taking photos yourself, I think that most places I've looked at charge about $60. But I literally 
take my photos on my iPhone. And I've only just upgraded my iPhone to the 11, but before that I had the, I've been doing this since I had the, the 6 or 7. Um, so I literally just take a really good photo, get some good, get a good light next to a window with not too shadowy, a cloudy day is perfect, and just take a really good photo. And I even edit them in my phone edit capability in the camera setting. So I don't even go into, sometimes if I want to change the look or the color of the original for the product that I'm making, I will go into Photoshop or Illustrator. But like I said, I take the photos myself on my phone, I'm not even joking. Um, and then I use a Melbourne based company who do sustainable printing. So that's all 100% recycled. They use vegetable and soy based inks only. Um, you could print your own cards on your home printer and score it yourself and everything. But I just found, I used to do that when I first started and it was fine. Or I'd print the image and then attach it to a, a, a card. Like, you know how you can buy those 10 packs of cards and envelopes and you can put your own artwork on. I started off doing that and that was fine, but I just find, um, I, I try, as I've gone on my business journey with my handmade and art products, I've tried to reduce the amount of physical work I have to do in it. And one of the best things I did was to start getting my greeting cards printed from an actual professional printer. So I just set my images up, sent the files through, they can help you do that if you're not sure. And then I buy my recycled envelopes in bulk and then I just match them together. So I will sell these cards for $6.50 retail on my website and Etsy. I think I've got some cards on Etsy. Um, I really need to have some cards on Etsy. Or at markets, I find I will actually sell them for that price or do like a deal, three for $10. These cards really only cost me to manufacture to have printed and to have the envelope about a dollar a dollar fifty that's not including the time you've taken to create the artwork obviously so you do want to have a bit of a higher price because there are other costs in running a business that you know you need to take a percentage out of your the products that you're actually making as well um so yeah these are great and i also wholesale these to shops so again they're not my biggest seller but they're a great little side side product to offer that doesn't really take me much effort. Once I've photographed the original artwork, set the files up, send them through to the printers, I usually buy them in packs of 25 or 50. Obviously, the more you get of one design, it gets cheaper. But if you are in Australia, I highly recommend printtogether.com.au. I will link that website in my description. But there are quite a few different printers out there. So that is my number two way to turn your art into a physical product that you can sell. And also, I should say before I go on to number three, I'm actually going to experiment selling some, making up some packs of cards and having them slightly discounted and selling them through Amazon, through the FBA system where I can just send off the stock and it sits in their warehouse and it sells through them. So that's something that's on my list to do before the end of 2020, just maybe like a 10 pack of cards or something. And then the customers will get obviously a discounted price because they're buying in bulk. So that was number two. Now, number three on our list of five things that you can turn your artwork into physical products to sell is jewelry. So I have a friend in Queensland, Australia, who has a laser cutting machine. And I thought, I think it was last year or the year before, I should get some of my designs. Uh, laser cut. Now, I am an illustrator by trade, so I can, I'm quite capable of using Illustrator the program. If you're not, I'm telling you there are gazillions of amazing uh, tutorials on YouTube for using Illustrator and Photoshop. But I had one of my digital designs is a fox, and I had her make up a heap of little acrylic and bamboo. I love it, so tiny little foxes and I also have a strawberry design that I did my whale which is actually an original painting on wood I wanted to make my whale into an earrings because my whale is one of my most popular probably the most popular all-time design that I've ever sold in any format 
Um, I sort of traced around the original shape and had them made into adorable little acrylic earrings. Uh, and also, where my last product that I'm going to show you is, it requires me to get my designs printed onto fabric, and I get them printed onto a like a rectangle piece of calico and there's sometimes little gaps so I'll sometimes put my little images in those gaps just to fill up the space and make the most of my printing cost and I will then turn them into adorable little fabric brooches so this is an apple design I just did this as a special once off sort of thing and I've just stuffed it with some of my scrap fabric the off cuts and attached, I didn't even sew the backing on, I just glued it with that super strong glue, that good old E6000. Um, and I've just machine stitched around the edge. So these brooches, I they haven't been a big part of my business. However, moving forward, I actually wanna get back into just doing little one-off little pieces for my, probably more my Etsy shop than my website because I love how Etsy has lots of really unique random things. Um, so I have heaps of these little off cuts fabric pictures of my whale, of my bee, all sorts of things, my cockatoos. Um, so that's jewelry making and people will pay good money for jewelry. Like I can sell these brooches for, you know, well, I don't sell them for a lot. They don't take me a long time to make it all for like $15 maybe. If that was all you were doing, if you were specializing in cool, funky art brooches, I've seen brooches sell for sort of $30, $40, dollars you know, and if they've got, you've got more hand detailing, stitching and stuff, would you can sit there watching Netflix or TV of a night time, just slow stitching your little handmade brooches. How cool would that be? Um, so yeah, brooches, earrings. Um, I also have some of that shrink paper where I, I, in white, so I can actually print up my designs from my original artwork and shrink them down in the oven and create earrings and stuff out of too. Um, I don't do jewelry a lot. It's more a limited thing. I, I just find it quite fiddly and I don't love the process of making them as much as I do other things. Um, but yeah, I just get my findings, like the brooch backs and the stud backs and stuff off either Etsy or eBay usually. So that is that. Jewelry is number three. Okay, number four. Now, I don't have any current products in this category with my own designs because I don't make a lot of them, but I just think they're so popular. Cushions. So cushions are one of those things that people love to buy with art, people, local artists' creations and designs on them. So you could do cushions a few ways. You could uh, have the fabric printed, make the cushions yourself if you're good with a sewing machine. I know in Melbourne there's some companies who will print the fabric for you and then make the cushions. So obviously you're going to pay a little bit more for that, um, but you're probably going to you'll be able to sell your cushions for more because they're beautiful, like they're limited edition. They're not mass produced from like Target or somewhere. Um, or some friends of mine who are artists will um, upload their images to places like Redbubble and Zazzle. And then they will maybe buy some if they're on special. So they've got some for when they do markets or for their online stores. But then obviously people can just buy direct from those platforms as well. So you're not making much money there, but you know, you're still kind of selling your physical products. So that's number four, cushions. At number five, now these are my most popular product that I sell and they've been my most popular product since I started making them by accident I actually had the fabric printed to make a cushion but because I didn't know the specifications and the sizing it came out really small and I was like oh my gosh what can I make from this how can I fix this mistake so my best selling product is my organic wheat bag so if you don't know what a wheat bag is it's a heat pack so like you take your hot water bottle to bed if you're cold at night or if you've got aches and pains, you can put your wheat bag. When I first started selling them at some markets, I was selling them for like $18. Now remember, I'm in Australia, so if you're in another country, keep in, keep in mind that our pricing might not be the same. Um, and I was just using like normal wheat, but now I sell them for $34.95 
and I use organic Australian wheat, which is certified, so it's really beautiful. A lot of people who are into sustainability and really care about having natural products in their home will buy my wheat bags. Um, they also are so popular for presents for people who want something beautiful but functional as well. Um, so I send my calico off to my printer and he uses really um, natural printing ink as well, which is great. I make up little tags for them because you do also, I should mention, when you are turning your artwork into functional products, do keep in mind if there are any rules or regulations around the product that you're making to sell. Wheat bags are a huge fire hazard if not heated correctly. So it is by law in Australia, you have to have an instruction tag with if you're selling a wheat bag. So just be aware of that especially things like for babies and stuff around the world, there's lots of regulations. So you just make sure that you're doing the right thing because you don't want anything to come back on you that you've caused a really bad thing to happen and obviously you don't want to get sued or anything fun like that. Now, again, with this design, which is called Gertie, Drew Barrymore E.T., I, that was from my oil painting and I literally just photographed that with my phone. Literally just got my phone, my iPhone, and got a good couple of good close-up pictures, edited like the lighting and the brightness in the phone, didn't even put it into Photoshop or anything like that, and then just cropped it uh, in Il I, I tend to prefer Illustrator, I'm not very good with Photoshop. And then I just cropped it and I sent it through. So these are just the coolest thing. I sell these pretty much all of my designs that I make. I also do little mini ones. So these are mini rice bags so instead of being filled with wheat because I find I just start selling things, especially when markets come back, having customers right in front of you, it's a great way to gauge if a product's gonna do well when you're listening to what they're, they're saying. And some people actually really just like the smell of wheat when it's heated. So that's why I originally made these little mini ones. Um, and filled them with brown rice. This was also a sizing fail. I was trying to make eye pillows, but they came out smaller. So yeah, these guys are little mini ones. And again, really popular for kids. So I have this in the B. So you can see how I followed my designs through on so many, like I've got my greeting card, print, I've got my wheat bag, and I also do this in a mini. I could probably have them cut out into jewelry. And this is my garden of green as well. So I just, like I said, I get the fabric printed, then I cut them and sew them myself. Here's my little fox, which matches my earrings. And then with the, the jewelry, I did forget to mention, I just get cut for earrings. I just get my little business cards designed and just on Mr. Print, literally, like keep it, keep it nice and cheap. Um, so yeah, that's how I do it. So I actually still make all of this myself. When it's busy periods like coming up to Christmas, I sometimes get a couple of helpers or um, my, my family members to come and help me sew or fill. And But you could, like if you started to make a product and it became really successful, you could always get it made offshore. For me, um, my business values is it's, I really try and keep everything as local as possible for environmental reasons, as well as just economy reasons. You know, I love to support local businesses and then I get supported back, which is great. But yeah, you could get these like mass produced for a lot cheaper and, you know, make more profit off them. So I hope you've loved these five things. I hope it's given you some ideas how you might sell your artwork in other ways apart from just the original. And remember, when you're selling art, you can be successful. And you just sometimes have to think outside the square. Thanks for watching. I hope you loved it. I would love to hear in the comments what products you think you could turn your art into. And also feel free to ask any questions. I'll always get back to you. And remember, create something today and have an awesome day. Subscribe. And if you like this video, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up to help me grow my channel and bring you lots of awesome DIY creative videos.